Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. A truck driver had to have a leg amputated today after his truck was hit by a commuter train on a level crossing in Banyo on Brisbane's north side. Police and Queensland Rail are conducting inquiries on the accident, which caused massive disruptions to morning peak hour transport services. The truck was stranded between the rail crossing barriers when it was hit by a northbound passenger train. The train driver attempted an emergency stop when he realised the truck was on the tracks, but the 400-tonne train didn't stop in time and wedged the truck's trailer against another train stopped at the station. The truck driver was seriously injured when the train hit his vehicle and he later had to have a leg amputated. The train driver received minor injuries, however none of the 11 passengers were injured. Investigations are continuing at the moment by Queensland Police looking at the whole of the incident, uh, including the use of the road, also the train actions and the actions of all the people involved. The Queensland Police are also investigating. The preliminary inquiries would suggest that the boom, the boom gates have actually come down on top of his truck, so there's certainly no suggestion at this point in time that he's tried to run uh, around boom gates. Local residents of Banyo have expected this accident to occur for a while with the crossing plagued with many near misses and causing drivers confusion. A lot of confusion, especially when trains are coming, they don't know where to turn left, park at the stop at the gates. Queensland Rail said the accident could have been far worse. We were very lucky here today that we did not have a fatality. Police and QR spent the day removing debris from the truck. Samantha Kolb, QUT News. Queensland's credit rating has been downgraded just two days after the Liberal government delivered their controversial budget. One of Australia's top credit agencies has dropped the rating from AA plus to AA. Fitch Rating says the downgrade is due to a deterioration of Queensland's fiscal position and debt patterns over the past four years. And it warns the rating may drop further if the state can't improve its position. Despite the credit drop occurring just two days after the first Liberal budget, the Treasurer still points the finger at the former Bly government. This decision shows Labor's appalling financial legacy continues to haunt Queensland. Mr Nicholls says the downgrade reinforces the need for the LNP's recent cuts. The former Federal Treasurer, Peter Costello, who did an audit of the state's finances, agrees. Newman and Nicholls want to turn around this state. And they have put this state back on a path whereby, first of all, it will stop the position getting worse. In Parliament today, the Premier continued to defend axing 14,000 jobs, saying the workers weren't sacked. Despite all the hype and the hysteria, not one permanent employee has been sacked as a result of the budget process. And the budget could claim another scalp. The LNP has suggested mining magnate Clive Palmer should leave the party following this comment yesterday. I'd be very surprised if he sticks to this policy, there'll be Premier by Christmas. Camille McLaughlin, QUT News. The first plane load of 30 asylum seekers sent to Nauru is settling into tent accommodation. While the government says the first transfer from Christmas Island went smoothly, the Greens have questioned the arrangement. The Sri Lankan men have drawn the detainment short straw shipped to Nauru under the rebooted Pacific Solution. There was a heavy federal police presence in case the men resisted, but the transfer went off without a hitch. Obviously, this is a very significant step. The message is very clear. If you arrive in Australia by boat, you can be taken from Australia by aeroplane. The detainees will endure tent housing until more permanent facilities are ready. There's no way of sugarcoating this. It, it, is, it is tough. The opposition welcomed the transfer but warned the boats would continue coming unless the Howard government's reforms are reintroduced in full. My fear is that uh, this government's heart just isn't in it. 2,400 asylum seekers have come to Australia since the introduction of offshore processing, but it's unclear how many will be relocated to Nauru. I'm not going to provide a running commentary uh, in advance of who will be sent when. The Greens want to know how long the men will be held on the Pacific Island under the ALP's so-called no disadvantage test. An accrued analysis of somebody who waits for asylum in Malaysia could be decades. Sam Canavan, QT News. Queensland's Paralympians won more gold today, the keys to Brisbane. The athletes were welcomed by a warm crowd in Queen Street Mall. Hundreds of fans gathered in the mall to welcome the athletes home and grab plenty of autographs. 
Wearing the 10 gold, 7 silver and 6 bronze medals won in London, athletes were proud their hard work paid off. You put a lot of, a lot of K's in the pool for uh, the events that you do, so to know that those early mornings were not truly really worth it. Premier Newman says the local hero's achievements are nothing short of remarkable. They do an extraordinary job. They inspire us with their courage and determination to break through any perceived limitations in their disability and live life to the absolute fullest. Then the Lord Mayor presented athletes with Brisbane's highest award. To present just for the 35th time in the history of Brisbane the keys to the city for the Australian Paralympic 2012 team. Despite having performed in front of crowds up to 80,000 at the Games, the athletes were humbled by the home crowd. It's always good to be home and to be home in front of uh, all these uh, people, local support. This has been fantastic. To come here today and be able to give something back to the community uh, and to all the guys that have supported me uh, all the way through my London campaign, it's, it's a really good feeling to be able to give something back. As the celebrations come to a close for our sporting heroes, they and the Australian public hope that they can improve on their great performance at the 2016 Paralympics in Rio. Ashley Minchin, QUT News. Morton Bay will see lots of action out on the water this weekend. The Australian Water Ski Racing and V8 Superboat Championships are part of the Celebrate Redcliffe Festival. The weekend water skiing will see many enthusiasts and curious spectators descend on the area keen to catch some of the action. A former world ski champion, now turned title boxer, is hosting the event. There's rides that you can go on for the kids, there's wakeboard demonstrations, there's uh, Cam Sinclair's doing some motocross demonstrations, uh, there's a, a holiday to be won actually by one of the great sponsors Forex, so there's lots to be done. It'll be an entertaining weekend and most of all I think there'll be some fantastic racing on as well. And for those with the need for speed, Fuel-injected V8 superboats will race at speeds of up to 250 kilometres an hour in round five of the offshore superboat competition. It's a good combination of speed, noise and uh, adrenaline. Just ask one of the racers what it's like behind one of them. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Someone said to me before I got into a boat that it's the best thing you can do with your pants on and it truly is. The festival starts tomorrow and concludes Sunday. These beasts of the sea will be around all weekend come and catch a glimpse, but at speeds of up to 250 kilometres an hour, you've got to be quick. Tom Serafin, QT News. Car enthusiasts from across Australia gathered in Ipswich today for a rally as part of the National Veteran Tour. Around 130 cars, each more than 90 years old, turned out for the start of the week-long tour. The magic of Australia's motoring past came to life in Ipswich as these old timers rolled into town. The Queensland branch of the Veteran Car Club of Australia is hosting the tour, which will be held in a number of locations around the city. Well, the car rallies give us an opportunity to come together as uh, old friends. We meet each other once every 12 months. The car owners are a breed of their own. I've been an enthusiast for 56 years now, been more than that now. <laughs> the variety of marks that are here and the uh, standard, the quality of restoration, and the enthusiasm. Ipswich City Council has been working over the past two years with tour organisers, giving visitors a chance to see some of Australia's motoring history firsthand. Organisers say the tour will bring a number of benefits to Ipswich. And it's not just about the heritage and bringing the community together, but what we're hoping for is the dollars this brings into the community. We estimate a million dollars this will generate in the community over the next two weeks. The tour includes a wide range of vehicle models such as Ford, Mitchell and Mercedes. Wendy Serrano, QT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Today has been another beautiful blue sky day. Temperatures in the southeast. The night was pretty mild with temperatures above 10 degrees. During the day, temperatures rose to at least 21 across the region. Around the nation tomorrow and Brisbane and Sydney should peak around the low 20s. Canberra will get early frost but warm up to 18 degrees during the day. 18 the peak for Melbourne and Adelaide, 27 for Perth. The forecast for Queensland, most regions will be fine and sunny, a possible shower for Cairns in the evening, 29 tops there. Townsville and Mackay might also have a shower or two, both reaching the mid to high 20s. The outlook for Brisbane, 
The weekend starts beautifully sunny with a maximum of 23 degrees. Sunday might have a few showers, 24 tops. 25 degrees and a shower or two for the beginning of the week. And that brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back on Monday with more QT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.